Welcome back to Dino Mega Studios. Today we're working with the time of day system and I'm going to show you how to make a save game object so you can save your current time of day. The idea for this tutorial was submitted by someone using this system. So if you have an idea for any of my systems that you'd like to see a tutorial for, please let me know. All right, let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is create a new project from the Epic Launcher using the time of day system. Let's go ahead and make a new folder in the project directory and name this save game. Go ahead and open the folder and inside make a new blueprint class. And from the all classes section, search for save and then select the save game. And then go ahead and name your save game object. I'm going to call mine BP underscore time of day underscore save game. We'll come back to this file in a second, but for now I'll go ahead into the blueprints folder and open up the BP underscore time of day and navigate the event graph over to the set starting point section. We're going to be working with both of these variables right here. The real second starting at is the variable we want to set when we load our game. This is the variable we use to set our starting point without a save system. And the game seconds total is the variable we want to save when we're saving our game. The game seconds total is the one that gets incremented during gameplay. So the variable we're going to save is game seconds total, and it's of type float. So let's go ahead and add a variable to our save game object, type float. I'm just going to call mine game seconds. Now the default value of this variable will be our new starting point. So I'm just going to leave mine at zero, which is midnight. But if you're using the real second starting at, you're going to want to set that value here. Go ahead and compile and save and then close this blueprint. We're all done in here. And back over in our BP time of day, let's go ahead and make a new function. And this is the function we're going to use to load the game. I'm just going to call mine load game. To start this off, we need to do a load game from slot. And this is looking for a slot name, so let's go ahead and promote that to a local variable. I'm just going to call it save game slot, and I'm going to leave the user index at zero. And then from our return node, we want to see if this is valid. So if we have a save game, it will return valid, but if we don't, it'll return as not valid. And if it's not valid, we want to create a new save game. So create save game object. And then select our BP time of day save game from the save game class. That's the file we made. And then this return node, let's go ahead and promote this to a local variable. I'm going to just call it save game. So this is what we'll do if we don't have a save game yet. We'll make a new one. But if we do have a save game, let's go ahead and cast to it. Cast to BP underscore time of day underscore save game. And then from the return node, let's go ahead and set this to our variable save game. Now, no matter what, we'll have a save game. So let's combine our execution pins back together into one. And before we continue, let's go ahead and select the save game slot. We need to set a name to it. And I'm just going to enter time of day for mine. Get a reference to our save game. Then from it, get game seconds. And this is the reference to our variable that we made inside of our save game object file. Then back in our load game function, we want to set our real second starting at variable to the value of this game seconds variable from our save game object. Then go ahead and just hook up a return node. Head back over to the event graph. Then right before we use the real second starting at, we're going to want to do this load function that we just created. So make a little bit of room and then drop your function in. That way when our game starts, it'll always load the current time. Go ahead and tidy up your graph, make it pretty. Next, let's go ahead and create our save game function. And I'm just going to call this one save game. Or maybe not. Looks like something's already using that name. I'm not sure what. So I'm just going to call it something else. Save time of day works. And just to keep it consistent, I'm also going to rename the load game to load time of day. Okay, so now in our save time of day, we're going to want to do the same logic we did at the start of our load game to get our game slot. And rather than just copying and pasting all this, I'm going to turn all this into a function. That way we can reuse the code. So go ahead and select these nodes. And then collapse the function with the right click menu. And I'm just going to name it get save game. Then go inside this function and then promote the save game slot and the save game variables, both to local variables. And then just connect the save game up to a return node and feed in our save game object which I'll call save game object. I also want to turn in our slot name because we're going to need this when we're saving our game. So go ahead, plug the save game slot into your return node and I'm just going to change it to save game slot name. It looks like we lost the value of our save game slot when we converted this to a function. So I'm just going to go ahead and set it to time of day again right here. 
Let's head back over to our load time of day function. And now that we have this get save game function, we can delete our local variables inside of this function and then just use the return as our reference to the target for the game seconds. Head back over to the save time of day function and go ahead and drop a reference to our get save game function into it. Then from the save game object reference, drag off and select set game seconds. And the value for our game seconds variable is going to come from our game seconds total from our time of day blueprint. The game seconds total is the one that gets incremented during gameplay. Then hook up a save game to slot, and this is the function that actually tells our save game to save its data. Feed in your save game object, as well as the save game slot name. Go ahead and tidy up your graph, and then just plug the save game to slot into a return node. And then whenever you want to save the game, you just call the save time of day function. And next I'm going to show you how to auto save it every 10 seconds. Head back to the event graph and make some room between the load time of day and our set starting point. Then from the load time of day, drag off and select set timer by event. Then from the event square, drag off and select create event. And then from the select function drop down, select our save time of day function. Go ahead and set the time to 10 and turn on looping. Then I'm just going to go back into our save time of day function and add a print string. That way we know when it actually saves. Go ahead and press play, and then after 10 seconds, you should see saved at the top of your screen. Then go ahead and stop the game, and then restart it. And you should be able to pick up right where you left off when the game saved. And just a word of caution, if you rename the save game object, or move it to another folder, it will reset, and you will lose your save game. So the name and location of this file is one thing you don't want to edit after you're done with it. And as you can see, when I rename it to save game two and hit play, we'll start right from the beginning at 12 a.m. There you have it. You now have save game logic built into your time of day system. Thanks again to Sky for suggesting this tutorial. If you have any questions or find any bugs with this or any of my other systems, please let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching and good luck with your game. Type float.